to every message, to every word. Glory to God. And before I get started, I want these all the pastors that are sitting near the back to come. Let's fill up the front. I, I want the, especially any pastors, associate pastors, to come to, to the front. Praise the Lord. We even have some, is there, are those seats available over there? Amen. Two. We got two. If pastor want to sit at this table over here, glory to God. Let's, let's give it, let's fill in. Amen. Our pastors and prophetess, prophets, glory to God, bishops. I want to be able to look in your eyeballs. Amen. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. We're going to start at the foundation. And it's important that you don't presume anything. Okay. Let us not presume anything. Let us not assume that we know anything. Let's kenose this morning. Okay? Let's just empty out and let's start over. We're going to start over. Glory to God. Hamanasa. We're going to start over. And we're going to hear what salvation really is. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to start at the very bottom. The, the chapter 2, the saving of the soul. If you don't have your study guide, get it. Take your notes inside of the study guide so that you can refer back to it. Amen? Want to say good morning to our online church, all of those that are listening. Amen. We had some technical problems last night with sound, and we hope to have those rectified. I hope that the tech team is rectifying that. Glory to God. The Lord is faithful. I was in Jamaica before I wrote the study guide, just getting ready to start on it. And the Lord spoke to me this one liner. This one liner. He said, There's no humanity in salvation. And I said, Yes. I said, Lord, I, I know that we're spiritual beings you know we've taught that for years he said there's no humanity in salvation none and I said yes Lord yay I know I know that we're we're sons of God we're we're spiritual beings he said there's no humanity he said three times there's no humanity and then I understood. He made me to understand. And I went into the scriptures. I began to read the New Testament. And suddenly, it's like scales fell from my eyes. And I began to see the awesomeness of this great redemption that God has wrought in us. Nobody could do this but God. Nobody but God. So I'm going to stay with the study guide because I don't want to miss anything. And I will say to the leadership, bishops, pastors, teachers, prophets, I believe in corporate ministry. So if the Lord give you a scripture, get it to me. The saving of the soul. There is much controversy regarding the salvation of man from his wretched sinful state. 
I think most schools of thought agree, though, that there was nothing man could do to free himself from the captivity we, he lived in, or we lived in. Amen? Ephesians 2 and 12 says that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. At that time, God was only speaking to Israel. And, and, and the testimony is that we were aliens. We were alienated from God. He didn't even speak to Gentiles. And strangers from the covenants. We didn't have a part in the promises, in the covenant of God, the covenant he made with Israel. Having no hope without God in the world. Having no hope. We, I, I remember as a child, I, I, I was so grieved as a child when I was a uh, eight, seven, eight, nine years old, I guess. I was, I was so grieved. I said, God, why, do, why did you allow me to be born just so I'd have to die? Because I was always afraid of going to hell. Because I went to Sunday school, you see. They made us go to Sunday school. And I knew there was a hell somewhere. Glory to God. And I said, now, why would you let me be born? I, I, I was so angry with the Lord for being born. Because I said, I, one day I got to die, and I'm probably going to end up in hell. You know? We were aliens. And some of you might have felt the same way. Bless the Lord. But we had no hope. We had no hope. Glory to God. And some of us, glory to God, didn't, we didn't know enough about the real God to even know that we didn't have hope. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Glory to God. I guess this settles the, the suggestion that implies saved or unsaved, we're all God's children. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, man, you read that verse. The scripture said we were alienated from God. But we hear people in the world say all the time, well, we're all God's children. No. Jesus said you're of your father, the devil. Praise you, Jesus. Are, are you hearing God? Before salvation, we were all alienated from God. Sin separated us from him and each other. Sin separated us from each other. Amen? Praise the Lord. Mankind was hopelessly doomed and destined for total damnation. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him would not perish but have everlasting life. Should not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. Amen? Amen? This is the good news. Man is given another chance to live. But how will it be accomplished? We've been given another chance, but we need to understand, we that have, we that have taken advantage of this new chance, we need to understand how God brought this about so that we can save others. Are you working with me? John 3 and 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, this is a conversation Jesus had with Nicodemus. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. He can't even see it. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born? This is a very important question here. Amen. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Listen to what he's saying. He's saying, can a man, if you, you say a man got to be born again, look at Nicodemus. Nicodemus is looking at the whole man. And he's saying, now, can this man go back into his mother's womb and come back out again? That's impossible. That's impossible. How can, this, how can this be? How can he be born again? Hallelujah. Important question here. But I think we fail to see its full relationship to the salvation experience. We did not see why this question is there. It is very pertinent 
to, the sal to our salvation. Can a man be born again? Can he go back into his mother's womb? He's already a man. Can he go and come back again? The first man, Adam, we know was a what? Living soul. What does this really mean, though? God created Adam's body with just a lump of clay. Hmm? It's just a lump of clay. The, the scriptures say he made it from the dust of the earth. The, the Chaldean word used there is red. Red man. Amen. That's what Adam means. And this was just a lump of clay. That in itself is, very, is a very important point. The body without the soul was lifeless. Hmm? God made a body. You know, you know it's, it's interesting how he made man. He made the body first. Hello? He made the body first. But it was just, it was just you know, I, I can imagine making a, taking, taking some clay and just forming it, shaping it. You know, we can do that, can't we? We can take some clay and form, but I don't, I don't know what we're going to do about the organs and the systems and the respiratory and all that stuff. You know, the digestive tracts and all that. I don't know, but I don't know if we can do that with clay. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> like God did. I mean, he's, he's a master builder. Glory to God. But it was just a lump of clay. It was lifeless. Lifeless lump of clay. Are you hearing God? Thus, it has no wants. Listen to this. This body. This body lying there on the ground without any spirit in it, any soul in it, has no wants, has no desires, has no lust, Pastor, has no anxieties. Isn't pleased or displeased. Amen. Doesn't have any likes or dislikes. Just a lump of clay. Are you hearing God? Doesn't have any pain or pleasure. Are you following me here? Huh? The body without the soul or spirit doesn't feel any pain. The body, this body, doesn't feel anything, doesn't want anything. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Body doesn't want anything. He don't even know why he's there. Hello. He can't even think. He has no way of thinking. Are, are you hearing God? Lifeless. Hallelujah. Has no feelings. This body had no feelings. No feelings. Are you following me here? Hmm? But moreover, I want to take this opportunity to persuade you that the soul is the master of the flesh. Hmm. He is the life that is expressed through the flesh. Are you getting this? The soul is the life that needs a body to express itself. Just like demons. Demons need a body to express themselves. That's why they told Jesus, the, in the man on the Gadarene coast, 
said, said, don't, if you're going to, if you're going to cast us out of him, at least let us go in the swine. We need some expression. We need to be able to express ourselves. And they did. They went in the swine. The swine, they expressed themselves. That swine, all that herd of sheep just went over the cliff. Herd of uh, pigs, rather. Went over, the, went over the cliff and killed himself. Expression. The body is the temple of the soul. This is very basic. But if you follow me, we'll go somewhere. It allows the soul to live in this world. I want you to know this like you know your name. I want you to understand salvation like you know your name. I, I, I don't want you to get uh, tongue-tied or, or whatever or, or any anxiety or when you got to talk about salvation. I want you to know it from top to bottom. Amen? Glory to God. It allows the soul, the body allows the soul to live in this world. God made this whole world. Then he made a man. But now, glory to God, in making a man, he said, now, glory to God, how's this man going to enjoy this world? He need a body. So he made a body. For the soul to live in. So, so, so now, put this in your little computer. The body, Adam's body, was the temple of the soul. It was the temple for the soul to live in. Hello? It was the house. It was the house that he lived in. It was his habitation. It's where the soul lived to express himself, to be able to smell, to be able to touch, to be able to feel. Are you, are you hearing God? To enjoy this planet that God had given him. He needed a body. Nevertheless, it is the soul that must give an account for the deeds done in the flesh. Uh oh. The body said, remember now, before you got in me, I didn't feel anything. I didn't want anything. I didn't desire anything. I had no lust. Hello. Before you got it, before you were put in me, I knew nothing. I wanted nothing. I had no likes. I had no dislikes. I had no iniquity. I didn't, I didn't know anything about all that. That's you. Are you hearing God? So the body is saying, don't blame me. Not, it's not my fault. The Bible says God blew the breath of life into Adam and he became a living what? Soul. Living soul. Soul is alive because it can express itself. It can feel, it can touch. Glory to God. It can, it can now discern what it likes and what it dislikes. He, it can smell and say, mm, that smells good. Mm, I don't like that odor. Mm, this tastes good because he's got something to taste with. Come on, are y'all hearing God? He got, he's got taste buds. He's got a mouth he can chew. He's got eyes he can see and, and hands he can feel. And feet he can walk and, 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 and feel the earth under his feet. And oh, hallelujah. A cool breeze on his body. His body was given to him to enjoy the earth. But now... If something goes wrong, the body's saying, don't blame me. I was doing fine. I'm just a lump of clay. I'm still a lump of clay. All these likes, dislikes, feelings, emotions, desires, they belong to you, soul. Hallelujah. 
And it's a strange thing that when man sinned, what did God say? Say, you going back to the dust where you come from. So the body is like, hey, I was dust in the beginning. I'm, I'm going back to what I was. But it's not so with the soul. The body says, I'm just going back to what I started out being. There's no, no skin off my nose. I'm just going back to what I was. Huh? That's not a punishment for me because that's what I am anyway. I'm just a lump of clay. I'm just dust. Come on, somebody. So that's that. God's not punishing me. You the one being punished because once I go back to the dust, you have no way to express yourself on this planet. You can't, you can't, you, you, you don't even belong here anymore. You don't belong in, in this world anymore. You need a body to live in this world. So you going, when, when, when I go back to the dust, you going into eternity. Come on, somebody. You going, you leaving this world. <laughs> huh? Because it's not even lawful for you to hang around down here. So, glory to God, next time you think you saw your, your dead mama walking there, no, she ain't walking around here. <laughs> That's just a familiar spirit. Hallelujah. If you're just dreaming or something, glory to God. Or God just used a similitude if, if, if it was if God had anything to do with it. He just used something you were familiar with. Hello, but your, the Bible said the dead know nothing of this world. Hallelujah. They in eternity. Are y'all hearing God? Hallelujah. So, the soul got to give an account. Now let's, let me drive this on home. I got a chart here. One side I have the law. Hallelujah. Yeah, I got this scripture together. No humanity in salvation. There's a scripture that someone sent me. Glory to God. Uh, St. John. St. John, the first chapter. Look at the 11th verse. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received them, to them he gave the power to become what? Sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of, of what? Blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of who? No humanity in salvation. We were not born of the will of flesh. Not born of the will of man. Man had nothing to do with our new birth. Come on, somebody. I said man had nothing to do with our new birth. Flesh had nothing to do with the new birth. I, I, I want to I I put that point out there now because it's the, it, it was the foundation for this whole message God gave me. It's the foundation for it. That's the first thing he said to me. There's no humanity in salvation. None. Hallelujah. No humanity in salvation, not born of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the will of God. Amen? I want you to keep that before you. Let's look at this chart here. Let's look at the law. Leviticus 5 and 2. Leviticus 5 and 2. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, this, this is one of the Levitical laws. It's one of the Levitical laws that God gave the, uh, the priesthood. 
back in the days of Moses. If a soul touch any unclean thing, if a what? If a what? How can a soul touch something? How can a soul touch something? Listen to what he says here. Whether it be a carcass of, of an unclean beast or the carcass of unclean cattle or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. How does a soul touch an unclean thing? It does so by using the hands of its body. Come on. Huh? That's how he touch. He got a body he can touch. He's got hands. Hello? Are you hearing God? Leviticus 5 and 4. Or if a soul swear, if a what? If a soul swears, pronouncing with his lips, pronouncing with his what? The lips belong to who? Soul. The hands belong to who? Soul. Look at Leviticus 5.15. No, let me finish reading that. It be, if it be that, um, that a man shall pronounce with, with an oath, and it be hid from him when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. If the soul swear, then who's guilty? The soul. The soul is the one that's judged, not the, not the lips. Remember the lips saying, at the end of all things, I'm going back to what I am, dust. I started out dust, I'm going to end up dust. Hello. Are you hearing God? Leviticus 5 and 15 says, if a soul commit a trespass, if a what? If a soul commits a trespass and sin through ignorance in the holy things of the Lord, then he shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord a ram without blemish spot, uh, out of the flocks. How does a soul sin? He does so by using the body that he has to disobey God. One of the things that God showed me when I was redoing the thought war is that, that we, we, we tend to, uh, we say things like, boy, if I, if, I didn't, if I didn't have this, if I didn't think so much, you know, but it's the soul that tells the brain what to think. It's the soul that allows us to use our brain to think. Remember, the, 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 the body itself has no likes or dislikes. Hello? Has no likes or dislikes. It's the soul that has a like and a dislike. Hmm? It's the soul that, that, that allows the, the, the brain to think certain things because the Bible tells us to cast down a thought. Come on. So if we don't cast it down, it's because we're allowing it. We're dictating what we're going to think. Are you hearing God? Let me take another minute to drive this point on home. Job 14 and 22. Job 14, 22 says, But his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. Who's mourning? The soul wouldn't, the glory to God, the soul wouldn't hurt if he didn't have a body. Come, come on. The body, is, the body is given, glory to God, the body was given for him to express himself. So now when there's pain, it's the soul that mourns. Are you hearing God? When the body is going through some trauma, some, some traumatic experience, it's the soul that feels all of that and mourns. Are y'all hearing God? Remember, without the soul, the body couldn't feel anything. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? It couldn't feel anything. It was just a lump of clay. This is very important, saints. 
Because, see, these are basic truths that are the foundation of our salvation. Are, are you working with me? Glory to God. Job 23 and 13. But he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desireth, even that he do. <laughs> Whatever the soul desires, that's what he makes the body do. The soul wants something, he tell the body, go get it. Hello? Whatever the soul desires, that's what you find the body doing. Are you hearing God? Whatever the soul desires, the body is used to fulfill. I hope I've made my point here. Have I made my point? The soul cannot live on earth without a body. It's unlawful for him to be here without a body. Hmm? Even demons want a body. They need a body to express themselves. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. These man and his body, soul, and spirit, these three are one. When the soul departs from the body, it goes into eternity, whether that be heaven or hell. It can't live on earth. When the soul leaves this flesh, it's, it is not jumping around like in, 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 in uh, uh, that some of the beliefs about reincarnation and, and, and uh, some believe that when you, when you get out of one body, you jump into another one or you come back like a tree or, uh, or you come as a car or come as a, glory to God, as a napkin or whatever. That's foolishness. Glory to God, when the soul leaves this body, it goes into eternity. It's unlawful for it to be here on this planet. Are y'all hearing God? When that soul comes out of this flesh, it's over. It's life on planet Earth is over. And it's going either to heaven or to hell. Hello? Are you hearing God? Unlawful for it to be here without a body. Are you hearing God? The body that gave it life goes back to the dust from whence it came. The point of all this is that man is a soul given expression or life in this world through a body. Did I make that point? The unregenerated man is a living soul, and it is the soul that was dark in sin and trespasses. I want you to remember that. It was the soul that was dark and in sin and in trespasses, but he used his body to commit the sin. Sin was committed in the flesh. Are you hearing God? It was the soul that was held in captivity by the spirit of bondage. And it also, it is also the soul that cries out to God for deliverance. Psalm 6 and 4. Return, O Lord. Deliver my soul. Michael, you got a mic up there? Amen. I need you to read for me, please. Because I keep losing my place here. Psalm 6 and 4. Mm -hmm. Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. Mm -hmm. O save me for thy mercy's sake. Save me for your sake. For your mercy's sake. Just for the sake of mercy. Read on. Not because I am good. Not because I'm so good. And not because I deserve and it. And I definitely don't deserve your mercy. But mm -hmm. remember your mercy, O Lord. Yes, sir. And save me. Yes. I am in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And the motions of sin are working in my body. This is the soul talking. My father, Adam, sinned, mm -hmm. and he opened the door for a foreign spirit to come in. Spirit of iniquity is working in me, Ephesians 2. That spirit is working in me, glory to God, and, he, and it just didn't, just didn't just come in, but it has, it has taken over my will. 
It took over my will. This is soul talking. Took over my will. I'm not strong enough. This is a strong man. Uh -huh. I, I'm not strong enough to resist him. Because when I, when, I, when, I, when I delight in the law of the Lord, I know the Ten Commandments. I know what he said. But there's another law that's working in my members. Come on, somebody. You know, you know, Paul said it like this. Paul said what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Come on, somebody. The law couldn't stop this, this, this law that Satan had working in our members. The law was powerless to stop that motions of sin that was working in our body. So yes, you gave me the Ten Commandments. I know what they say. And I know they write. Mm -hmm. And I delight in them. I want to do them. Romans 7 chapter. I want to do them. But there's a, another law. There's another law that's bringing me into captivity. Huh? And it's, it's working. See, when the devil came... When his spirit came to live in us, when that spirit came to live in us, it didn't just come in and say, hi. No, it took over. And you know what happened? The devil, see, Jesus, Jesus told us, he told us to us, he said, you of your father the devil, and guess what? It's his lust you're going to do now. So when the devil comes in with his spirit, he brings his spirit into the flesh. He's, his spirit is more powerful than ours. He's more powerful than the soul. That's why the scripture called him a strong man. That's why they couldn't, God didn't send Gabriel or Michael or none of them to deal with this. He had to send Jesus, God himself. God had to come down here to deal with this one. God had to come to deal with Lucifer. God had to deal with that spirit. He said, the soul is saying, this thing is, you know, I done, I done messed up. My daddy... Adam sold, us, sold, sold me out. I'm sold under sin. That's what he said. I'm sold under sin. Glory to God. What is he talking about? He said, there's nothing I can do about this. As much as I, I come to church, as I hear the law, I hear what you're saying, I know it's right, but there's another law working inside of me. Huh? You know what that law is? It's called evil concupiscence. Y'all remember that? Evil concupiscence means a craving for sin. Whether you, whether, you, whether you intend it to or not, there's something in us that causes us to crave unrighteousness. Think about it when a baby born, you don't tell him what, you have to tell him what, what, what to do, you have to tell him what not to do. And that, that baby, he just, you tell him don't touch that, then he just, he got to touch it. He got, he just, the moment you said don't, he, uh -uh. He's going to do exactly what you tell him not to do. You got to teach him how to do right, not how to do wrong. Come on. Instinctively, he's going to do something wrong. It's, it's instinctive. Why? Because he was born in sin. He was born with that law working in him. He was born in captivity. Come on, somebody. He was born with this spirit taking over the body, taking over the flesh. The devil control this flesh and make and that's why we could sin glory to God and we were helpless and then he he just put our conscience under captivity conscience was full of trespasses and dead works couldn't even judge the flesh anymore couldn't even judge our deeds anymore come on are you hearing God so we went along with sin Paul said Who's going to deliver us from this body? This body is a body of death now. Why is it a body of death? Because, because the, the, the enemy is living in it now. The enemy is living in it, glory to God, and he's got a law working in it. He got his own law working, causing us to lust with his lust. He, the devil now, got him a body that he can live his lust out in. Come on, somebody. I want you to see this. And the soul is saying, uh, uh, he's, you know, he, there's a faint cry. Say, oh, God, 
I messed up. I messed up. There's nothing I can do about it. He, he's stronger than I am. This spirit in me is stronger. And, and that's why when I, when I would do good, there's evil present with me. Glory to God. And, and, and when I delight in your law, there's another law working in my members. Glory to God. Telling me, go ahead and do, do, go do it. He said, when I would do good, I find myself doing that which I would not. I want to do the righteous thing, but I end up doing the wrong thing. Why? And, 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 and finding pleasure in it. The devil said, you, not only are you going to do the wrong thing, but you're going to find pleasure in it. I'm going to make sure sin is pleasurable to the flesh. Huh? Are you hearing God? Hallelujah. So we were trained. This body was trained to enjoy sin. The devil said, just leave me alone now. I'll let you enjoy some things. You, you, think, you, you think God wanted you to enjoy the world. I want you to enjoy the world. Let me show you how to enjoy the world. So he's beginning to live his lust out. He, this spirit has come in, and he's now living out his lust. Satan is living out his lust. Anything he, he, he decides he wants to do with this flesh, guess what? He does it. And we were too weak to resist. We couldn't resist because he had our conscience under bondage. Dead works, the scriptures say. Are you hearing God? Read on, Pastor. Who shall deliver me from the... From this body of death. Uh -huh. This was the cry of our soul as we heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Our faith in God came by hearing the word now, of the now, Lord. Now, how, 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 here's this man, glory to God, I don't care who you are. If, if, are there any people in here that's not saved? Raise your hand if you're not saved, if you're not ashamed to, 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 to say I'm not saved yet. I don't have the Holy Spirit yet. Lord, just raise your hand. It's, it's all right. Praise the Lord. Don't have it yet. Okay, praise God. I got one. Amen. It doesn't matter if you don't, if, if we, if you don't have the Holy Spirit. The, the scripture says this, faith come by hearing. Uh -huh. The gospel got to be preached. C -c come on, somebody. In order for someone to, 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 to start to believe, Tim, in order for you to believe, you got to hear the gospel. See, you won't even know what God has done until you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, 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 and see, one, one thing about God, God created us so God knows us. Yeah. Glory to God. And, and God know how to talk to that soul, glory to God, that can't talk for itself. Come, come on, somebody. God know how to get past everything that the devil has done in you. He knows how to get your attention. He knows how to, glory to God, he can, he can pierce through all of those ideologies, all of that stuff you heard, all of that, all of, the, all of them different uh, religions that you might have want to test it this and, and try to test a little bit of that. Glory to God, I, try, I, try, I said, I'm going to be a Muslim. So I go to the Muslim. I said, no, something about that ain't right. Glory to God. See, once you done been to Sunday school, <laughs> you got that foundation in you. Some of that stuff sounds, that's foolishness. Child, please. Glory to God. So I'm going to check out Transcendental Meditation. I, said, I may act stupid, but I ain't no fool now. I know I ain't no, I'm I know God is God. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and see, one thing about hearing the word, hallelujah, hallelujah. When God get ready to talk to you, he don't talk to your head. He talk to that, that, that thing he blew into you. He talk to that spirit that's in you, the one that he put in you, that candlelight of the Lord. He said, I don't care. I don't care what you've been taught. You know, God said, one of the most powerful things God ever said to me was that I'm not in competition with the devil. When I get ready to talk to a man, I don't care what the devil has said to him. When I get ready to talk to you, brother, glory to God, you're going to hear me. 
Come on, somebody. I know how to make you hear me now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why a, a, a drunk man can stagger in off the street. And he can hear this gospel. And good God Almighty. What that? <laughs> Glory to God, he start to sober up on the inside. I don't care what it look like on the outside, but God start talking to that inner man. That man, glory to God, that he blew into him. That's the one God talked to. The one that God know is lost and helpless and can't do no better. The one that's in captivity. God pierces everything the devil has done and get to his inner man and says, I am God. I don't care what you used to be. You could have been a mass murderer. When I show up, you could have been a witch. Sold out to the devil. But when I show up, when I talk to you, there's something inside of you that said, that's God. There's something inside of you that knows him. He said, that's God. And he said, when, when the word of faith is being preached, that soul start waking up. He said, oh, that's a familiar voice. That's a, that's a, that's a familiar voice. That, 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 that's a voice I heard in eternity. I, I heard that voice before I was born into this flesh. Come on, somebody. Before I came out of my mother's womb, glory to God, way back in eternity past, I heard that voice. I know that voice right there. Glory to God. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Faith come by hearing. If you ever want to come out of sin, start hearing the word. <laughs> start hearing the word. One thing about the word that I found years ago. The power of the word is to change. It changes your desires. The word got a life of its own. The word will make you stop, amen, taking off stuff. The word, glory to God, amen, will make you start putting on stuff. Make us women cover ourselves up. Come on, somebody. We used to walk around half naked, but when we start hearing the word, the word starts you to cover yourself up. Glory to God. Glory to God. The word got the power, glory to God, to take the taste out your mouth. Come on, somebody. The taste for, for alcohol and liquor and hallelujah. The taste for, for nightclubs and glory to God. You start losing your desires. Good God, just, just from hearing the word. Glory to God. You, you come in and you say, you, you don't even realize what's happening to you. Glory to God. You can be on the dance floor dancing. And some about that word, God know how to bring it to your remembrance. I used to dance on the, glory to God, I was down there dancing with the Jackson 5 and Candy State. Glory to God, I'm just down there boogieing down. Glory to God club full of people. After a while I heard, I heard the Lord say, what you doing here? Good God. I knew it was God. Hallelujah. Man, I got on that floor. I, and the dance floor was so crowded. I was trying to get out of there. I was always scared of God's things. I was scared I was going to hell that night. Hallelujah. And I would go See that word, I was, I, the word, I sit there in the club, people drinking, and I tell it, I whisper to the waiter, give me a Coke. And I had, you know the devil make a fool out you, I had a Coke pretending I'm drinking liquor. <laughs> Just pretending, and 
And when I know everybody getting high, I go to laugh right along with them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just as high as they are. They ain't drunk nothing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Scared to death. Hallelujah. You want to get out of here? Because I know God's going to kill us all right in here right tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm talking about hearing the word. I'm talking about going past your intellect. All that ideology, all that stuff you think you know about life. Uh-uh. When God get ready to talk, something in your spirit says, God talking to me. That's God talking to me. Something in you just know it's him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Read on, Pastor. Faith come by hearing. We heard and we believed the report. Yes, we did. But what does it really mean to believe? What does it mean to believe? This is important. The scripture declares that if we believe in our heart uh -huh. and confess with our mouth, mm -hmm. then we should be saved. Yes, yes. Romans 10 and 9. Uh -huh. The word believe means to commit unto. Uh -huh. To commit to one's trust. It is an action word uh -huh. in the salvation experience. Uh -huh. To believe is to trust God. Now, I ask God why... Why does it take so much for people to get saved these days? We're going to find out in a minute exactly. But I want to just, this word, believe. Believe means to commit to. If you trust it, commit to it. You have not believed until you commit. Come on. Belief is an action word. Right. See, the Lord knows when he has spoken to your spirit. Because, see, your spirit will bear witness with the word of God. Your own spirit will tell you that's God. Your soul will say that's God. But if you're not ready, if for some reason you think you're not ready, to change your life, you won't commit. So the lack of commitment is unbelief. Come on, come on. Are you, are you hearing God? I want y'all to follow me here so you, you can be able to teach this. Amen. To believe see, is to know that God spoke. And see, God is blameless in this. He's blameless because he knows when you know that he spoke to your spirit. He knows when your spirit bears witness with his word. When your spirit says that's God. Huh? But if you don't commit, that's unbelief. You understand what I'm saying? To know that God spoke because your spirit bears witness. But to not commit to what he say is unbelief. Are, are, you, are you here? Because the Bible says demons, devils believe. Come on. But they don't commit to God. Come on. They believe and tremble. But they still do wrong. They don't commit to God. Are you hearing God? So if, 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 if when God speaks. You don't have to tell God, you know, you know. I know that was God. God know you know. Because he talked to your spirit. He talked to your inner man. So when you, when you know, when you know and you don't commit to what you know, that's unbelief. Praise the Lord, Tanya. Amen. That's unbelief. To not commit to what you believe. To not commit to God's trust. To know you can trust him, but not trust him is unbelief. When you don't trust God, you're not committing yourself to his trust. That's unbelief. I want, I want us to understand that because this is foundational when we're teaching faith or anything. What we need to understand what unbelief is. 
And see, and, and if God wants us to, this might, God don't want us to be frustrated. He does not want us to be frustrated because we don't know why, 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 why people don't believe. Why don't people believe? They have. They know. See, God, God, see, there's no way. See, the Bible says those who preach must be sent. I know I was sent. I don't know about nobody else. But I know that and right there was sent. I was sent. And most of y'all was sent. We were sent to preach this. And when I preach, I preach under an anointing. And it's the anointing that destroys the yokes. Come on, somebody. It's the anointing that pierces through all of this stuff that your life has been going through and talk directly to you. Huh? So now, if you hear God, your spirit, God said, now I know you heard me. I talked to your spirit. You don't have to tell me what, you think I don't know when you know? I know when you know it's me. I know when you know. But when I tell you something and you don't trust me, that's unbelief. You don't put yourself, you don't commit to my trust, to trust me. That's unbelief. Are you hearing God? Read on, Pastor. If our trust is in God, mm -hmm. then we commit ourselves to that trust. That's right. To believe is to commit the soul to God for safekeeping or preservation. Now, if you want to get saved... You want to be saved? You got to commit your soul to God for preservation. You got to believe that God can preserve that soul. Read on, Pastor. Hebrews 10 and 39. Mm -hmm. But we are not of them who draw back mm -hmm. unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You got to believe all the way to the saving of the soul. You got to believe. You got to commit your soul to him for safekeeping. Let him lock it up. Let him put a seal on it. Let him hide it inside of himself. You got to trust that. You got to trust that God is able to preserve your soul. Come on, somebody. Huh? Now, what does that mean now? Now, that, that means, glory to God, that means, praise the Lord. I know his wife very well. We're good friends. Amen. But if I'm the soul and this is God, amen, I got to believe. You can wrap around the pastor. I got to believe that he can preserve me, that he, that he can hold on to me. Now, what this means is I don't try to preserve my own self. It means I don't have no more say-so in the matter. I don't tell him how to do it. It means that he's the one that's doing it. I am hidden in him. He's got me. He's preserving me. He hid me in himself. Good God Almighty. And I have no more say so from then on. Trust him. I trust him. Hallelujah. Are we getting this? Read, Pastor. The plea of the soul is mm -hmm. take me out of this body. Mm -hmm. But don't let me perish. Take me out of this body I, that I've used for sin. The reason I want you to take me out of it is because there's a spirit in me. That's, that's the spirit of the devil is in me. And, and it's his lust that I'm doing. And there's nothing I can do about it. And, and he got, he's got evil concupiscence working in my members. The motion of sin is working in my members. The law of sin and death has taken over my body. And I crave sin when I don't even want to sin. 
I'm doing stuff that I know I don't need to do. But somehow I can't seem to help myself. I'm not strong enough for this thing that's in me. Glory to God. And, and I, I'm trapped in this body. And this body got a law working in it. The devil is working in my members, in my flesh. Glory to God. If, maybe if you get me out of here and give me another body, let me start over again. Just give me another one. I won't, I won't use that one for sin. Glory to God. If you just get me out of this one. Glory to God. The soldier's crying. Get me out. Please get me out of this. Glory to God. There's nothing I can do in this flesh. I can't, I can't, I can't serve you. I, I try, but I, I, I can't. I, I try to do what's good, but, but evil is present with me. God, if you just get me out of this body, because this body is, I, I've turned this body into a body of sin. I've turned it into a body of death. God, please get me out of here, but say, don't let me perish. I know that if I come out, I go into eternity. Come on, somebody. If I come out, I'm going to heaven or hell. So if you take me out, preserve me. Don't let me be lost. Don't let me go into perdition. Don't let me go into damnation. Save me. Save me. The body not crying out for salvation. But the soul is. So says, save me. Save me out of this body. Save me. Hallelujah. Read, Pastor. Forgive me uh -huh. for all of the sins I committed in this life. Come on, the body's not praying for forgiveness. That you gave me. One day this body will die. Uh huh. And I will surely go into eternity, oh, into eternal damnation. Uh -huh. Lord, save my soul. Deliver me from this body of sin and death. My Jesus. Do y'all hear? Save me. Hallelujah. Isn't this, isn't this something? How God said, I got another body for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Read on, Pastor. The atonement. Mm -hmm. Now the great mystery begins to unfold. Mm -hmm. How will the father answer the cry of his lost creation? Okay. The solution is Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. Here come the solution. Uh-huh. Before the foundation of the world, he was ordained to be the propitiation for sin. See, God is not making this up as we go. God said, I, don't, I finished the end before I started the beginning. So in eternity past, Jesus Christ was to be the propitiation for sin. Don't you ever think that God woke up one morning and said, oh my God, man done sin. Oh, oh, what are we going to do? No. Everything is finished. Hallelujah. The end has already been told. Hallelujah. It had to be. Otherwise, how is it that, that we're reading about things to come? That's what Bible prophecy is. It's things to come. So that means God has already determined what's going to be. Are y'all working with me? Read on, Pastor. First John 5 and 11. Mm -hmm. 12. And this is the record mm -hmm. that God has given to us eternal life. Mm -hmm. And this life is in his son. Okay. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. If you got the Son, <coughs> you got life. If you don't have him, you don't have life. I don't care if you're talking, walking, jumping, skipping, and hopping. You're still dead. That's what he's saying. We were walking dead folk. He that has the son is like, ooh, I got to tell you something. Glory to God. Last night, I was sitting, when I went home last night, I was sitting down, and I'm, I'm, don't let me forget to teach this, Mike, before, before this conference is out. Amen. I was sitting down, glory to God, get, just sitting there, and somebody was talking to me. And I, I don't know what they were saying, because in the midst of them talking, God said something. He said, let me tell you what an antichrist is. Let me tell you what an antichrist is. 
what an antichrist spirit is. Remember he said that there are many antichrists. That spirit is already in the world. <laughs> don't let me forget to tell you what it is. Oh, this conference is over. I don't want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> but just don't let me forget it, okay? Amen. When we get to the new man, that's where I want to put it at. Read, Pastor. We know God loved the world so much that he gave his son, Jesus, uh -huh. so that whosoever believed in him would not perish, uh -huh. but indeed be saved. This is the condition for salvation. The soul cannot be saved unless it believes on Jesus Christ as its redeemer. Okay, now, it can't be saved unless it believes on Jesus. What is belief? To commit to that which you trust. It's to commit to that which you trust. So you can't get saved unless, glory to God, you do more than just believe. You got to commit. You can't just say, I trust God. I trust you. No, you got to commit your soul to him to be saved. You got to say, I commit myself to you. I give you my life. Come on. I give you my life. Oh, come on, somebody. I give you my life. And see what we've done? We gave it to him, and then we tried to take it back. But when you commit, when you believe, you never try to take it back. You never seek to save your life. Remember Jesus said, if man save his own life? If you try to save your own life, you shall surely lose it. You got to commit it to God. And until you commit your soul to God, you have not really believed. You got to commit to what you say you trust. And if you don't commit, that's unbelief. Are you hearing God? Read, Pastor. Remember, to believe is to trust and commit to him that you trust. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go any further, I need to insert a very important element that might explain why it is so hard for some people to get saved. Okay. Uh-huh. Luke 14 and 26. This is important, saints. It I remember uh, when we were teaching on salvation, uh, Pastor Mike taught salvation like I had never heard anybody teach it before. He taught it from St. Matthew 5, glory to God, which was the foundation for salvation. I, we had never heard anyone, glory to God. See, people, people make, make Jesus seem like a Santa Claus. Make him, try to make him so desirable, like he's a Santa Claus or something, so everybody desires Santa Claus. Because he's coming with good gifts, you know, worldly stuff. Amen. So, we, so preachers have made, have made Jesus look like he was some, some cosmic Santa Claus. Amen. So people run to the altar and say, I, I give my heart to the Lord. I give my heart to the Lord. And then they have no experience with him. They, and when they have no power, glory to God, they can't live holy. They don't understand. They think there was no power in Christianity. But they never really got saved. Come on, somebody. They never really received the Holy Spirit. Come on. Are you working with me? But this must be taught. This is the part of the gospel that we don't hear taught. Read this. St. Luke. If any man come to me uh -huh. and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, uh -huh. yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, God said, remember, remember our foundation, the one line of God gave us. There is no humanity in salvation. This goes back to our type, the tabernacle. Remember, there were no windows in that tabernacle. The reason being, no foreign light was to shine in the tabernacle. No light from outside could shine in the tabernacle. This means no outside influence. So the Lord is saying if your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife, your children, 
If they have more influence in your life than I do, you cannot be my disciple. No humanity. No humanity. That's why when, as, when we are saved, glory to God, we are closer than natural relatives. There's no humanity in salvation. He said there cannot be any human influence in your life. If your mother is going to counsel you, she needs to be spiritual. If she's not spiritual, you don't need to listen to her. Come on, somebody. Huh? I don't care how much you love. Glory to God. I don't care how much you love your buddy or your friend or your prayer partner. Glory to God if they're not spiritual. They can't have any more influence than God. No humanity. He said, if this is so, now see, you don't hear this preached at no crusade. <laughs> they, don't, they don't preach it. They don't tell you, you can't come to God unless you're willing to give God more influence than anybody in this world. You got to commit. Somebody say commit. Belief means commit. Commit yourself to God. Trust God and nobody else. If they're not speaking the oracles of God, you don't listen. I believe the word he uses, don't let men spoil you. Hallelujah. Read on, Pastor. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now, wait a minute. You know, that, you know what's so sad about this? This message here was preached to a multitude. They were following Jesus. Running around, he's working miracles and stuff, and they were running around. They done left home, glory to God, falling behind Jesus. Ooh, son of God. Woo. And all of a sudden, Jesus stopped and turned around. He said, first of all, you can't listen to nobody but me. Okay. He's going on about his business. They all follow. Okay, I got that. I'm still going. That's why Jesus turned around. And by the way, if you're not willing to pick up a cross, you definitely cannot be my disciple. Now, wait a minute. Did you ever hear anybody preach that at a, at a, at a, at a soul-saving crusade? No, that turned people off. Can't afford to preach that. Who going to want to get saved? You telling them they got to suffer. I'm getting saved so I won't have to suffer. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, what, what you mean? So, so how is it that we preach the gospel so much different than our master? Come on. This is our master talking. He was the first one to preach the gospel. He came with the good news. How in the world he called this good news? They're supposed to be good news. You got to suffer. Good news, Mark. Jump and shout and rejoice. You got to suffer. You got to carry the cross. Supposed to be good news. What in the world? You know, I understand now why God said, my ways ain't your way. You know what's so marvelous about God, Mike? How he can tell you something like that and you still rejoice. <laughs> Come on. I, I, I can he tell you all this stuff and, and you still <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. How in the world is he good telling you you got to care across? Salvation is an awesome thing. There's nothing in this world to compare or define salvation. You don't, have, you don't have anything in this world to define salvation with. It defies everything in this natural world. 
So now, he said, if you're not willing to carry the cross, you can't be my disciple. You're not willing to suffer. Read on, Pastor. For which of you, <clears throat> intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he hath sufficient to finish it, uh -huh. lest happily after he hath laid the foundation, uh -huh. and is not able to finish it, all that he behold it begin to mock him. All that behold it. I'm sorry. All mm -hmm. that behold it begin to mock him. Mm -hmm. Saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Now, now you don't hear this preach. See, see, this don't sound like salvation message. But this is salvation. He's saying now, Jesus saying, wait a minute. Before you decide you want to be saved, <laughs> before you decide that you want to follow me, I need you to count up the cost now. I need you to count up the cost. I need you, first of all, to know that if you're going to follow me, no one else can have any more influence than I do. You got to listen to me. You got to trust me. Second of all, there will be some suffering. You're not going to make this trip without suffering. Now, I need you to, to sit down and count up the cost. Are you willing to make the trip? Because some will start out with me. But when the suffering come, they will get offended. And will not finish with me. And you'll be mocked. See, they'd be, they'll mock you. You started out and couldn't finish the race. Do you ever know people that you say, I remember when he was saved. I remember when she was so on fire for the Lord. Mm -hmm. They started the race and couldn't finish it. Started out with the Lord, huh? but somewhere along the line, cares of this life, trials, tribulation. Became an offense. Hallelujah. But suppose we were taught this from the beginning. See, they left us with no options. They told us this was a gravy train. And everything's going to be hunky-dory now that we got God. Because I sure thought I was going to get rich after I got the Holy Ghost. Because they told me, well, Lord, just, just name it and claim it. And I believed them. They said, name it and claim it, man. I wouldn't put all on everything. Glory to God. Walked, put all the breeze up those people's cars and amen. Hallelujah. Got all that stuff and got to hide it from the finance company. Praise you, Jesus. Hello. Amen. I got it now. I got it, boy. And they, them people got their stuff back. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Mike don't want to remember, hallelujah, how we come from church. And we got to park five blocks from the house and walk to the house because we got to hide the car. Because if we put it in the driveway, the record going to come and get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they were so fast. Boy, they were so fast. I, I, I dashed in the house one day. I said, I said I'm, I'm just going to run in here. There's no way. I'm, I, I'm just going to run in and snatch something and run back out. When I got to that door, they were pulling out the yard with it. I saw oh, him. Jesus. Hallelujah. I was on a five-day fast in the church, and I made sure I parked inside the fence. Come out to church after five-day car, gone. Brand new Lincoln. Hallelujah, gone. <laughs> I come out. We've been in the church for five days a night. I got my blanket and pillow. I'm walking out the door to go to the car. Said, oh, God, they got me, Jesus. I turned around and went back in the church and fell on the altar. God, why you did this to me? Wait. God, I ain't did nothing. You went and got all that stuff you couldn't afford. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Talking about naming it and claiming it. Hallelujah. 
Ride pretty for two or three months. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Read on, Pastor. Mom, can we revisit mm -hmm. Luke 14? Yes. Go ahead. You revisit. I sense the Lord talking to you. Go ahead. Okay. I, I remember the part that we just read mm -hmm. that says to believe is to commit. Uh huh. And, and to also trust him, right? Right. And then when we read Luke 14, it says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and, and mother and, and his wife, he's beginning to talk about the whole family. Mm -hmm. He cannot be my disciple, mm -hmm. right? Right. And whosoever does not bear his cross cannot, uh, and come after me, cannot be my disciple, right? Right, right. And then... Jesus says, for which of you intending uh -huh. to build a tower, yes. sit it not down first and count it up the cost. Right. Now, remember in scripture when Jesus was explaining how we being evil, talking about the world, mm -hmm. but we can give good gifts. Yes. But then he was also saying, but our heavenly father will do the same. And remember when he, when he, I believe, healed someone on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And they, they began to confront Jesus about healing on the Sabbath. And then he said, which of you, if, if I believe he said, if, if uh, oxen or something fell into a, yeah, a pit, the ox fell into the pit. You, you're going to let him perish there. Right. You'll get him out. You'll get him out. Right. Right. So with the same logic. With the same logic, he was showing the heart and mind of God. Right. You know, the heart and mind of God. And so we can also see this from this aspect. Okay. When he says, for which of you intending to build a tower, when, when God save us, <laughs> he has already looked and seen in our hearts mm -hmm. if we hate mother, father, and sister, brother. Come on, come on. Come on. Yes. God is not... God is not building the body of Christ and then realizing uh -oh. what's in it come on. Uh -oh. later. All right. come on. So God began to show, you know, that w when he laid the foundation, it was, it was, the foundation is laid with people who have already decided to commit All right. come on. by way of belief. belief. That's right. You know, the, the body of Christ is not starting and then start, God starting all over. Right. Stopping and then starting all over. You know, the body of Christ is already set yes. in the world mm -hmm. where people that have, have already believed God. Mm -hmm. And God, when God count up the cost, that's why God can have an auditorium full of people mm -hmm. but only save three. Right. That's him counting up the cost. Count the cost. Because right. that one that really don't believe is not sufficient right. for God to finish right. the body of Christ. That's all I wanted to um, add to that. Praise. Now, you know, now that's, that's, that's revelation there. That's revelation why it takes some people say, I've, I've, I've been calling on Jesus for months, and, and I've, I've been at the altar, and people keep coming back and forth to the altar. But God already looked in that heart and see that you don't meet this criteria. You, 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 you don't meet this criteria. I, you, you, you're, you're not a candidate for salvation. You're not, because I know that you, you, there's still some more influence in you other than me. I know you're not going to commit to me. Come on. Right. I know you're not. And that's why, that's why I, I used to say it like this. You can't get saved until you don't, you don't want anything but God. You don't want anything in this world but God. But this is what God is saying right here. Thank God, Mike. Amen. This is what God is saying. He's saying you don't meet this criteria. And that's why God is saying I don't want you leaders to be frustrated because people can't get saved. Don't you know God want to save folk? God want to save folk. But God know who is meeting the criteria. God knows those people that have an Esau spirit that are just mournful because of some of the situations that they're going through. And he knows that person that has completely given up. 
and saying, I'm at the end. Glory to God, I don't care what. Glory to God, just take me. Take me. Glory to God. When you, you can't even, God doesn't even answer until you get there. Hallelujah. 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 God know who's coming to this altar. Glory to God, crying out. But, but, but the influence of something else is still in their heart. He knows that when they get up, glory to God, they're going right back. He knows that. That influence is still there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he's saying, thank you, Pastor Mike. He's saying, I'm not starting. And, amen. I can't build a body of Christ like that. I'm not, I'm, not using, I'm not using anything other than belief. I'm not using anything other than faith to build this. I'm not using anything other than a commitment to me. Glory to God. Yeah, I felt sorry for you enough to give you my son. That's far as I'm going. Come, come on. That's far as I'm going. I've already felt sorry for you. I gave you my son. Now, if you're not willing to commit to him, you can't get saved. And he knows that. He knows why people are calling on Jesus and, and praying and crying and falling out at the altar and coming to church. Amen. Trying to get saved. Trying to get saved. Never get saved. Why is it taking so long? No commitment. No commitment to this. They don't meet this. There's some more influence. There's something that still got influence. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's give God a praise for that. Hallelujah. Look at Luke 14, 33, Mike. Read that. So likewise, mm -hmm. whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. If you don't, oh, now wait a minute. Why they don't preach this at the crusade? <laughs> nobody, nobody coming to the altar. Because if you, you preach this at the crusade, everybody going to do like the rich young ruler. Turn around and go, hmm. I'm in the wrong church. Praise God, I came to the wrong meeting. But Jesus didn't hesitate. Because, see, this is a precious gift. I'm trying to keep you out of eternal damnation. Glory to God. And you want to hold on to this world? I'm offering you a whole new world, eternal life with the Father, to be the head and not the tail, in eternity, to judge angels, to be exalted higher than any angels, to set you in a place where, glory to God, men will fall at your feet and worship you in the millennium. Just like they do with my father. And you want to hold on to something in this world? This world that I'm going to burn up? This world is going to be desolate? When I come back, I'm going to desecrate this world? And kill everything in it except for a few men? And you, this is what you want to hold on to? This your dream? I don't have to save you. Unless you commit to me. Huh? You got to trust me with your soul. Commit it to me. Hallelujah. Give up everything you got. <laughs> we don't hear this at the crusade. Come on now. Start, try preaching this at a revival meeting. Nobody coming back the next night. Hallelujah. Only those who are being drawn by the Father will hear this message. Are you hearing God? Mike, read that, that paragraph just above that. Just above it? Uh-huh. This is another portion. This is another portion of the gospel that oftentimes is not ministered at large crusades mm -hmm. or or altar calls. God is offering us another life in a kingdom where we have no earthly mother, father, sisters, or brothers. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go down to if so? He's offering us another kingdom, mm -hmm. another life. Now, this is important as we proceed. 
He's offering us another life in another kingdom. He want to take us out of this world. And we're trying to hold on to it. But he says salvation takes you out of this world and puts you in the kingdom of God. This is important. He want to give you another life. <clears throat> and see, the perversion of this is men have taken the scriptures, God will give us abundant life, and they've attributed abundant life to new cars and houses and land and money and credit cards and all of that. Abundant life has nothing to do with material things. Hallelujah. Because there are people that's not saved that's got that. C come on. Plenty of them. More than we more than we would probably ever have. Glory to God. Ask Jay-Z and Beyonce. Glory to come on. Amen. So what's the message for them if it's all about natural things? <laughs> God wanna take us out of this world and put us into his kingdom. The Bible said we were <coughs> translated into another kingdom. Translated into another kingdom. Ooh, Jesus. Salvation. Took us out of this world. Hallelujah. Are we hearing God? I want to move forward, Mike. Okay. Uh, Romans 5 and 8. But God commanded his love toward us. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. God, but God commended his love toward us. Mm -hmm. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us while we were still sinners. Mm -hmm. I just want to inject here that some believe Christ only died for those of us who actually received salvation. Mm -hmm. But that is not the case. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for our only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay, so that settles that argument. Because hmm? there's, there's doctrines out there that say that Jesus only died for those of us that are saved. That's not real. It's, the scripture says he died for the sins of the world. The whole world. So that everybody would have a chance at salvation. C come on, somebody. Are y'all hearing God? He's a propitiation for all souls. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Romans 5 mm -hmm. and 9. Mm -hmm. Much more than being now justified by his blood, mm -hmm. we shall be saved from wrath through him. I want you to remember that. Just kind of shade, uh, underline it. We shall be delivered from wrath. The church needs to remember that. So in Bible prophecy, there's a difference between the, 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 the trumpet judgments and the vow judgments. The trumpet judgments, where the scripture tells us that at the sound of the last trump, there are seven trumpets, right? And th th those are seven trumpet judgments that are coming upon the world. But the vow judgments come immediately after that. There's, a, there's something that takes place between the, the trumpet judgments and the vow judgments. The vow judgments are the wrath of God. The scriptures say the seven vows are filled up with the wrath of God. The church is not appointed to wrath. Come on. But just like Israel remained in Egypt during all the plagues, so shall we remain here during the seven trumpet judgments. And it's at that last judgment, the, the church will be raptured at the last trumpet, and immediately, <clears throat> immediately after the church is raptured, immediately the vow, the, I think the scripture said in the space of a half hour, one half hour, 30 minutes, the vows are poured out. What, the first vow is poured out upon the earth. So there was silence for, for, for 30 minutes. This is the church getting out of here. The church get out of here at that last trumpet. Glory to God. And then the, the vow judgments start immediately. 
And, and when, they, when, the, when, the, when the vile judgment starts, the earth is already undergoing some judgments. I mean, some terrible things, stinging locusts and all of that stuff. Glory to God. Hail storms, the fire, and amen, a third of all of the, the, the trees burned up. Glory to God. And, and all of the green grass is burned up. All that happens in the, in, the, in the seven trumpet judgments. But glory to God, right at the end of that, right at the end of it, is the rapture of the church. The church is raptured, and immediately after the rapture, the, vibe, the judgment, the, the wrath of God is poured upon the earth. God's not going to pour his, out his wrath until he gets his people out of here. Come on, somebody. So, so that's, that's, what you, that's what the scripture, when, when you're praying the prayer, Lord, lead us not into temptation, that's the provocation. That, that word temptation there is synonymous with the provocation where God is provoked. Glory to God. And that's the wrath of God. Don't lead us into the wrath. Get us out of here. Hallelujah. Get us out of here before you pour out your wrath. Hallelujah. And we need to always pray, God, don't let me go to, don't let me be here for the wrath. Don't let me be here for the wrath. You missed the rapture, saints. You done missed it. Come on. Nobody that has the Holy Ghost now that doesn't go up is going to have a second chance. The man that doesn't have the Holy Ghost has stand a better chance than one that had it. Hmm. The sinner, the one that never knew God. There will be a few men left that never knew God. A few of them will be left <clears throat> that we'll rule over. But nobody that had the Holy Spirit and didn't finish that race will have a second chance. Nobody. God say, glory to God, you bastards. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't own you. Hallelujah. So let's, 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 let's make sure we get in the rapture. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's make sure we get in the rapture. Hallelujah. I don't want to be here for the wrath. Glory to God. Read, Pastor. Much more than being now justified by his blood. Mm hmm we shall be saved from wrath through him. Amen. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, mm -hmm. much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. All right. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Uh-oh. All right, let's look at the atonement now. The word atonement means reconciliation and exchange. 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 Remember that word, underline it. <clears throat> because we, <clears throat> we often, we often deal with the reconciliation part, but we got to deal with the exchange too. Come on, read, read, Apostle. In layman's terms, mm -hmm. it simply means to be at one with. Mm -hmm. If the death of Jesus is the atonement for sin, then we must become at one with that great sacrifice. Now, now, this is, this is a slow motion view of salvation. Read, Apostle. Romans 6. And three, mm -hmm. know ye not mm -hmm. that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Every one of us. How many of us born again? If you've been born again, you were baptized into his death. These are not just words in the Bible. This is God's redemption plan. This is how he worked his redemption. He baptized us into Christ's death. Read, read Apostle. Therefore, we are buried with him mm -hmm. by baptism into death. Mm -hmm. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Okay. 
For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Okay. That henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Okay. Now this is what God is saying here. Glory to God. Kareem, come. Praise the Lord. You have another? Yeah, Daniel, come, please. Amen. Now, this is, this is what God is saying. We've done this illustration many times, but I want us to see it today. Amen? Glory to God. You're going to be the soul, and you're going to be the body. All right? The soul now, inside of the body, side of the body, right? It's crying out, save me from this body of death. This, I, I, it's my body, you gave it to me, but I have sinned with it. And, 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 and see, it's not just because I've sinned with it, glory to God, but there's something else in here. Something you didn't put in it. Y'all here? Hello? Glory to God. Yannick, are you here? Where you at? Oh, you on the camera? Give me another, some, some young man, please. Anybody? Thank you, yes. My other portrait. Amen. All right. I'm sorry, but you got to be the bad guy. <laughs> There's something in here. Get between them. That's got this, my soul, in captivity. There's a spirit. So, but he didn't, he, he not only has a soul in captivity, but he got, this is, this is the spirit of Satan, he got something working in this body. He's got evil concupiscence, the law of sin and death, working in the members. So he craves sin, right? He craving sin. So, so now the soul is saying, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here, but if I do, I'm dead. If, 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 if I leave this right here, I'm dead. Why do you think folks don't want to die? Why do you think people scared of death? I don't care what they say. Glory to God. Why you think they're trying to save their life? Why you why you think they try to what why why what do you think the term self-preservation come from? They're trying to preserve their life because they know if they ever leave this body, they dead. Even the atheist. He know if he leave this body, he dead. He can say he don't believe in God if he wanna, he must believe in something. What he's what is he afraid of? See, the soul knows if I get out of here. If I come out of here, I am dead. Not only is he dead, I'm dead. Because it's not lawful for me to be on this planet. I got to go into eternity. I got to go into eternity. I got to go into heaven or hell. And I ain't fit for heaven. Come on, somebody. I'm not fit for heaven, so I know I'm going into hell. So the soul is trapped. I, he said, but if I'm going to ever get right with God, I can't get right in this because this thing that's living in here is stronger than me. And he has created some desires in here. So how am I going to ever get right with God? I'll never be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says this, of Jesus, says, in order to spoil a man's house, you got to first bind the strong man. Hallelujah. You got to get rid of the strong man that's in there. That's why nobody couldn't do this but God. So Jesus come down. And Jesus, glory to God. Glory to God. Can I get a Jesus? Come here, Tim. Oh, 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 oh. all right, all right. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I knew he was coming. <laughs> I can't leave this up to Michael, Gabriel, nobody. I got to do this myself. So now Jesus, in the form of the Holy Ghost, he got to bind the strong man and get him out of this. But, but see, <laughs> hallelujah. And the soul, the soul said, watch this. Come on back in there just a minute. Watch Jesus. Jesus looking at this, and he hears the cry of the soul. The soul said, I I want to be saved, God, please. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. And I commit my soul to you. See, 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 I'm going to tell you why this is so significant. Because the soul understands that if I get out of this body, I'm dead. I can't live without a body. I, the soul understands that. So the soul got to believe that if I come out of this flesh, glory to God, you're going to preserve me. You're not going to let me perish. That's why he said, God so loved the world that whosoever believe on him should have eternal life, should not perish, but have eternal life. And the soul says, I believe it. 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 So I'm going to commit to it. I'm going to commit to it, Lord. Take me out. Take me out of this body of death. Take me out of here. And, and I'm going to trust that I'm not going to perish. I'm not going to go into damnation because I know I'm not fit for heaven. I can't get to heaven. Glory to God. But you say you'll save me. You say you'll get me out of here without me going into hell. Glory to God. I'm going to trust you to do that. I commit to you. So, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come here, Tim. I need you anyhow. Come on. Glory to God. Glory to God. You got a good part here. You're going to be the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Tim, Tim was the only one in this room that raised his hand and said, I need to be saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God has selected you for this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Jesus, Mike, you don't got promoted. You God. I like that. You like that. You like that. You're going to represent the Father. That's, that's, good. that's, that's good. You can live with that. So, you don't exchange. Now you, Jesus, you the Holy Ghost. Amen. You the Son of God. Hallelujah. So now, this is, see, the Bible says, the reason why I got the two of him, because the Bible says that salvation is the workmanship of God. <laughs> Say, God did this. Hallelujah. Because, see, Jesus said, thine they were, but you gave them to me. The father is the husband man. It's the father that does the work. Come on, somebody. This is his plan. This is his mystery that he hid in himself. He didn't tell nobody. He didn't tell anybody. The Bible said this thing was hidden from the sons of men. All the prophets of old, glory to God, they couldn't see this. They couldn't see how this thing was going to work. Glory to God. So now the father says, now this is how the father works his work. Soul crying out, have mercy, save me. I believe the message. I believe it. I believe and I commit my soul to you, Jesus. So God, God says, okay, soul. God comes and get the soul out of the flesh. Take him out and put him in the spirit. Come on, somebody. Put him in the spirit. Get behind him for me. Get behind him. Put him right there in the spirit. Glory to God. Say, I'm going to hide you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
I'm going to hide you in the spirit. So said, so said, save me now so I won't perish. Huh? Because I know I'm not fit for heaven. Glory to God. And if you, if you take me out of this, I'm going to hell. My God. Hallelujah. But now when this comes out, watch this now. Watch this. When, when the soul comes out, guess what? This dies. This dies. That's dead. That's dead. Huh? Because this came alive because the soul was in him. Are, are y'all hearing God? This came alive. But now, glory to God, and see, this was in him. Get over here by him. Amen. See, he was in there with him. Come on a little closer. Y'all cool. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Amen. See, he was in him. But the father says now, says, I got a plan here. Mm -hmm. See, I want you to be, I'm going to save you, soul. I'm going to save you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to save you. But when I save you, I want you to tell the world what I did. Because I want to save some other folks. So, so I'm, I'm going to bring you back with him. I'm going to keep you in him. Just hold on to his shoulders. I'm going to keep you in him, and I'm going to bring, when, I, when, when, when the Holy Ghost comes back to this body, I'm going to bring you with him, glory to God, to get in this body. Because he's coming to get in this body. I'm going to put him in this body. But before I do, I got something else I got to do. The Father got to deal with this. Because this is the strong man over here. The Father got to get rid of him. See, because this body still got that in it. He got to get rid of him. So he, he deals with the strong man. He get him out of there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And now the Father. He, he, he playing. <laughs> I ain't do that. <laughs> <laughs> now the father the father says and I want you to don't forget this because as we move further in this uh, salvation mm -hmm. this part is going to be important the father says this body is the only link that I have with the human race and I got to satisfy the law of kin, kinsmanship. So I need this body. The father say, I need it. Didn't say he need it. The father said, I paid for this with his blood. I, I, I paid for this with his blood. So this belongs to me now. Now watch this. But the father said this. Me and my son going to live in this, but we're not living in nothing unclean. We're not living in nothing unclean. We're not living in anything unclean. So I'm going to, I'm going to fulfill the type that I gave Abraham. I'm going to circumcise this flesh. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to cut away that law of sin and death that was working in its members. I'm going to purge it. Glory to God. I'm going to get that thing out. See, see, when he got iniquity out of that body, that was the circumcision. That was the cutting away of sin out of the flesh. Just like you cut the foreskin and get rid of it. Glory to God. He cuts that law of sin and death out of the flesh. The father did it. The father did it. That's why Jesus could say, thine they were, but you gave them to me. Now we're going to understand in a couple of sessions why he did that. So now the father takes the spirit that was in heaven with him that had come back to heaven. Remember Jesus went back. He said, if I don't go back, I, the comforter can't come. So now here come the comforter. But God now says, wait a minute, before you go in, Mr. Soul, remember you committed yourself to me. I'm going to put you back in the flesh. 
I'm going to put you back in that body, but I want you to understand something. Before I got you out, you were in the flesh. But you're not going back in the flesh. You in the spirit. Come on. You in the spirit. You not in the flesh. You in the spirit. You are hidden in him. Huh? He is in the flesh. Come on. You hear this? Jesus now is going to be in the flesh. You, you got that? Jesus is in the flesh. The soul is no longer in the flesh. He is in the spirit. You got this, son? He is in the spirit. You got this, Wanda? He is in the spirit. And the reason he's there is because God said, now, I need to save some others. I'm going to do, Jesus is going to get back in this body. Father, put him back in this body so that this body can be resurrected. Yeah, right, right down beside him. Now, when the father give the word, see, the soul is there. Jesus is there. This body can't live. Remember, the body can't live. Don't have no desires. Don't have no nothing. It can't live without a spirit in it. Come on, somebody. Huh? And when the father give the word now, the father said, now I have planted you. I baptize you. See, when he put the soul in, the, in Christ, he baptized him. That's baptizing. Total submersion. He totally submerged him in the spirit. He is buried in the spirit. The essence of it is the soul is no longer in the flesh. No connection. He's no longer. He is there. The Lord said, now, remember the scripture said, you got to work out your salvation. What is the work you got to do? Be the witness of what I've done. Huh? I, I'm going to use this body to tell the world what I've done. Huh? Oh, Jesus. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but glory to God. I, I want to use this body. Huh? I, Jesus, want to use this body to tell the world what I've done. You're an example. You're my witness. Uh-huh. You the people that you the one they know. They know what you are. They know. They know the life you used to live. Huh? They can identify with the sin, the sinner that you was. Amen. And now, glory to God, when I raise you up, you're going to be raised in the newness of life. You're going to be in a new life, a new life. Somebody say new life. New life. New life. New life. Yes, working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2, 12 and 13. For it is God which worketh it. Praise you, Jesus. God is working it out. He's going to work out the ministry through Jesus Christ in this body. But now he said, don't you forget, Mr. Soul, that this body belongs to me. It's no longer yours. You gave it up. You told me to save you out of it. You, don't, you shouldn't have nothing to do with what I do with it. Huh? It doesn't belong. You asked me to save you out of this body of death. So, you, so, so now you gave it up. You say you trust me with your soul. So don't come back and try to usurp no authority here now. Just because I'm going to make you the steward. I'm going to make you a steward. Because I want you to work out your salvation by being a witness. I want you to be the explanation of what I've done. Come on, put that in your book. I want you to be the explanation. That's what the preaching of the gospel is. The explanation of what God has done. That's what we preach. We're explaining it. We're explaining it. When we witness to people, we're explaining what God has done. 
When we live holy, we're explaining the power of God. Come on, somebody. That's what a witness is. He explains what happened. Isn't that what he does? Hallelujah. So now when the father, the father says, now, soul, you hid in him. You can't make this body live no more. He got to make it live. The Holy Ghost is the one that's going to bring this body to life, not the soul. Are you, are you following me, Coco? The, the soul is not going to bring this body back alive. It's the Holy Ghost. It's Jesus that's going to bring it back. When the Father gives the word, just like he planted him in death with Jesus Christ, he's going to resurrect him in the same power that raised Christ from the dead is going to quicken this mortal body here and raise it up from the dead. Come on. All right, God, raise him, raise him up. Raise your man up. <laughs> raise him on up. Right behind, right? Get, get like, you're, like you're supposed to be. That's, that's a new man. That's a new man. Old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of who? God. Come on, clap your hands and tell him thank you. Come on, clap your hands and tell him thank you. Thank you. And the soul is saved. I said the soul is saved. Hmm? <laughs> that part of it I do tonight. I don't want to. I don't want to rush you, huh? I want to rush you, but do you do you do you see the saving of the soul now? I didn't finish this, amen, but we're going we to finish, finish the entire book before this conference is over. The pertinence, we're going we to get this, amen. Apostle Mike, anything you want to add to this? Praise you, Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and tell him thank you. So much why I, I, I'm you saying, do you feel me putting on brakes? I'm, I'm putting on brakes here, glory to God, because I don't want to push you too far, fast and too far. Praise the Lord. Thanks for these scriptures. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Are y'all getting this? Y'all better be getting this because I'm getting wild here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah.